live from the mist and shrouded mountaintop fortress that is X and Y Communications Headquarters. You're listening to the world famous Mountaintop Podcast. And now, here's your host, Scott McKay. Hey, all right. Welcome again to yet another episode of the world famous Mountaintop Podcast. My name is Scott McKay, at Scott McKay on Twitter, real Scott McKay on Instagram, Scott McKay on YouTube. You can also find us on the web at www.mountaintoppodcast.com. And I cordially invite you to join our Facebook group also, which is called the Mountaintop Summit. Today, I have a good friend of mine. She is one of the sunniest and kindest women I know. And she's also been helping both men and women do better in their love lives and in their lives in general for a good number of years now. And she's a lot of fun. So the topic of how to make a woman feel more comfortable came up. And I immediately thought of my guest, Alana Pratt from California. How you doing, Alana? Good to talk to you again. Oh my God, it's been so long. We just had this pre-interview chit chat about the kids and BMX. It's so good to be back on the show. And believe it or not, I'm actually up in Canada right now on sabbatical. So my my country, my home country. That's right. You're originally a Canadian. I will. Yes. That's what my passport still says. Yeah, you're still a Canadian, right? Yes, I am. And we won't get into politics, but I'm glad I have that out if I need it. But that's not what we're here for today (laughs) to talk about. We're not going to talk about politics or travel today. Two subjects that I like to uh, talk about on my off time, on my downtime. But I don't want to bring the whole podcast down by talking about either one of them. So (laughs) we're going to stick to the topic at hand, which I think is really an important one. Yet a lot of guys, well, I don't know, Alana. It seems like a bunch of us as men really don't fully grasp just how important this idea of safety and security is to women, do we? Yeah, this is a deal breaker. You could have just as big of biceps, just as big a bank account, let's say. Um, But if you don't have the capacity to make her feel safe and comfortable, you will be looked over. It is fundamentally necessary for her to open not just her vagina, but her body, her life, her soul to you. would like to have that lasting relationship, to have her be devoted to you. This has to be there. However, very few women are willing to admit it's the number one thing they're really looking for in a noble badass is like, does he, does he make me exhale? Do I feel safe with this guy? Does my vagina want to open with this guy or not? Yeah. yeah, we don't want any clenched up vaginas in this life. Permakegels are painful. No, we don't want that whatsoever. But a lot of guys don't exactly know how to make her feel safe and comfortable. And so I want to dive into a lot of different nuances today. And the first one I want to sort of start um, talking about, if we could, is a lot of men talk at women, but not with women. And when I say that, Scott, what do you hear? I hear that men are generally goal oriented when it comes to women. Mm. Yeah, very good. Uh, And that's, we love that. (laughs) Did I get it right? Did I earn the Alana Pratt seal of approval? (laughs) Yes. I should have like a sound effect for that or something. (laughs) It sounded sort of like a seal approving me. (laughs) Yeah. But um, I think that's the why. And I want to go into the how, because when you're talking at them, you're not actually aware of them. You're uh, three steps ahead committed to the outcome. And I love that masculine energy. It's really awesome. But you're going to, you know, I forget, can I swear on your podcast? Nah, do what you want to do. You're Alana Pratt. You're Alana freaking Pratt. You can do whatever you want. (laughs) Well, you're gonna, yeah, you're not, I was gonna say fuck, but whatever. It's, It's lost the moment now, but maybe it'll come back. So here we go. When you're with her, It is like a figure eight, like an infinity symbol. It is a dance back and forth. If you really want to bring her in and and claim her, ravish her, open her body, mind and spirit. So you can't talk at her without being aware. What's her body language doing? What's her breath doing? Is she clenching? Can I actually sense her permakegel? Can I sense that she just Oh, just lowered her shoulders there. If any of you have ever done like a Tony Robbins, you know, event, like you'll notice how he interacts with people. It's very uh, NLP. He's a complete master, but he's so aware of what's happening with the man or the woman. He's talking with them, not at them. And so, guys, I want you to start to just slow down. And yes, you can choose your outcome. 
Yes, you can choose to score with her. Make that choice, but then let it the fuck go. Let it go and just be present with her and start to do this figure eight dance talking with her. Just that you'll start to notice, oh, she's going to feel heard. That You're going to know pushing too hard or pull back. You're going to learn just to listen, be interested, not interesting. And you'll be amazed how quickly just that conversation shifts. I'll give you guys an example. This guy I was uh, was dating um, was talking to me and we had like a real quick little catch up and he said something about some ex-girlfriend um, who he just met and oh, how are you? Like he was that abrupt. He was just talking about an ex-girlfriend and then bingo over to me. And it was like, ah, he was sort of talking at me, giving me the report of the day, but he wasn't talking with me. How would it feel to somebody that you're newly courting to just dump that you just talk to an ex-girlfriend and then toss the hockey puck over to, to her. And I paused intimacy expert, Alana Pratt on the dating scene, <laughs> trying to walk my talk. I paused and, and I just said, I said, ouch. And he goes, what? And I said, do you know what I mean by the concept of talking with versus talking at? And he's like, no, I don't understand. And I said, well, if you were aware of me, aware of my feelings, aware of my heart, aware of my my vagina, aware of my safety, aware of like my comfort, if I don't care if you want to mention your ex-girlfriend, that's awesome. But can you somehow tie it into why that's going to be a contribution to this conversation? And he goes, well, I just didn't want to take up too much time. And, and in fact, that's why I'm so excited to talk to you right now is because you're so much more amazing than my ex-girlfriend and she could never talk, but you can always you know, go deep with me. And I'm like, Oh, well, could you say that? And, and I go, and then I'm just being a dork. And I said, okay, take two. And he goes, oh, okay. Uh, Hey, I was just talking to my ex-girlfriend and it just really reminded me how much I appreciate you and how deep we can go with conversations that really matter. How was your day? And I'm like, oh, I'm wet. That just made me wet. Like, thank you. And he's like, Whoa, I never understood this concept. And how just a simple shift could make you feel so safe and comfortable. Now, a couple things there. First of all, isn't it amazing how men aren't even aware of the vagina, as you said, even though the vagina seems to be that goal that they're oriented towards so often? I mean, what in the world does talking about my ex-girlfriend have to do with your vagina anyway? I mean, why am I here if that's what I'm talking about? What's the purpose? Just hear myself talk? I mean, that's... First of all, something I think needs to be brought up because the point you're making there was a little bit subtle in that regard. So I want to make sure that nail was driven home. Second of all, you're mentioning this figure eight dance. And I think it's fully possible guys aren't really grasping what you're talking about there. I mean, a sideways eight is infinity. Uh, figure eight, you know, in the shape of an eight sounds like one of those car races where they all crash into each other. So what are you talking about there exactly? Okay, yes, welcome to the Are we woo- getting sideways yet or what? <laughs> welcome to the woo woo world of Alana, I suppose. So right. <laughs> a figure eight, an infinity symbol, means like it goes forward and then it goes back and it loops around itself. It's like literally waves, literally waves going in, waves going out. This type of um dance back and forth. It's not a one way street and it's not only one directional and it's it takes into consideration the other person. In communication, I'll just break this down. Communication is a two-way or a two-part process. It's it's one person talks, but until the other person actually receives it without judgment, the communication didn't happen. So for example, if one person says something, but the other person is not paying attention, judges the other person back, hides, doesn't even listen, rejects them, any of that, the communication didn't happen. It's just one thing out there spinning for eternity in somebody's head, making them hesitant, doubtful, and all the rest of it. True communication is when you can actually receive what somebody has to say, and you don't go anywhere, and you don't change them, you don't fix them, you don't judge them, you don't do anything. It's like a it's like a state of understanding. Something happens when when somebody speaks to you, and you just understand. There's something that rests inside the body. And most people don't slow down enough to experience this. And all they ever do is talk at each other. And that's where a lot of misunderstandings happen. It's why a lot of people don't feel safe, seen, or understood. And there is why a lot of people crave deep connection but can't have it. Well, one of the physical features of that imagery of the eight is that an eight is completely connected. 
Yeah. It's not like a four or a seven. I mean, an eight loops around itself and comes back. There's yes. not a disconnect, literally, within a number eight, the symbol for it. Yeah. And I think what you're talking about is connection. People lack the ability to connect. People just aren't connecting out there. They're talking at each other instead of seeking to understand. They're seeking to be understood. Right. To be right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and to be right. Oh, yeah. If you're not right, then you're blocked and don't ever come back or I'll report you to Facebook. You know, <laughs> if you challenge my views on anything, especially politics like, <laughs> or, or travel, <laughs> I guess, you know, or Canada. <laughs> so what I think is fascinating not to be missed here is you were very eager to dive into this conversation, which I was happy to let you do. And where did you go first in a conversation to men on how to make women feel safe and comfortable? You didn't go after the guys who drive like maniacs and are making women dig their fingernails into the dashboard because they think they're going to be killed on a first date. You're not talking about guys who engage in either physical or even psychological thuggery by beating on women or belittling them or manipulating them. Although, you know, let's throw it on the table here. All those things make a woman feel highly unsafe. Also, where did you go? You went directly into the communication aspect of how women tend to not feel so safe and secure around men. What is your reasoning behind going there first, Alana? Is it because you're giving these guys the benefit of the doubt on all the easy, low-hanging fruit stuff? Or is it that is the message you think most guys really need to hear first? Well, I, I went there because one, I think the listeners are a high level kind of gentleman who's doing their personal work and would never scare the shit out of a woman driving <laughs> 10 miles sure. an hour or be degrading to her. Like, I'm just hoping, you know, the people on the call here have a, a higher desire to, to have intimate connection. But I also went there because guys, don't you want a quality woman? You're not going to get a quality woman if you can't make her feel safe and comfortable. And how? You're going to be able to show that you are a man worthy of a quality woman who's devoted to you, cherishes you, treats you with respect, appreciates you, is if you can communicate and connect with her. So I'm going straight for the prize. I'm just giving you the how that might be a bit of a blind spot, that she is a very emotional, feeling, body sensation creature. She might be impressed with your words. She might be impressed with your biceps, etc. But that's not enough to make her truly surrender and open and be devoted to you. She needs to literally, in your communication, feel home. And I'm trying to teach you how to do that. Well, I applaud and appreciate both your high-level view of men and your high-level view of this conversation. Indeed, wow. what I talk about in terms of the big four with men, which the first pillar thereof is confidence, of course. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe women should want you, they're not going to believe it either. Yes. Second of all is masculinity as women define it. And I know you love talking about the masculine feminine dance, which we did on our first show together, of course. Guys, you can go back and listen to that, by the way. Alana is a repeat guest, if I didn't mention that at the outset of the show. And the third pillar of the big four, the fourth being character, by the way, the mm. third pillar of the big four is making women feel safe and comfortable in your presence. Another way I used to talk about it years ago was inspiring confidence. You're confident as the first pillar. That other pillar is inspiring confidence in women. But that was a little bit too arcane for some guys to really grasp because it's sort of flowery language. But what I really mean by that is making women feel safe and comfortable in your presence. Is who you are making her relax? Is it making her unclench? Now, whether there's a physical vaginal clenching or whatever is an interesting concept. But yes, just watching her shoulders relax, watching her face relax. I mean, so many guys, Alana, have been trained not to give any women any compliments or not to show any sign that you're approving of her, lest you be needy, that they let that pendulum swing in the other direction. And let's say they met the woman online, they're on a first date with her. They don't even bother to tell her she looks better than her pictures or that they're already having fun. And those simple gestures wouldn't diminish the man in the woman's eyes. They'd allow her to relax, stop being self-absorbed in terms of how she looks, how she's acting. Is this going to be a humiliating experience or can I relax and enjoy myself? Yeah. And from there, she can relax and actually start enjoying the date because the guy has already created a safe environment for that to happen, frankly. Yeah. And really what you're, I love this. I love the depth we're going here because 
she's waiting to see if she can exhale. You've heard of the masculine feminine, like, is he the flagpole so I can be the flag? Or is he the banks of the river so I can be the river? This kind of thing. But she's literally feeling into this because in today's day and age, most successful women don't need a man. They're going to choose one because their life is going to be even better. And they want a man who doesn't need her for approval. He's already solid in his character and in his confidence. And she would be a gift to him. It's like we're, we're talking about where the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. That's the level of you know relationship that my clients are, are looking for. So she's acutely aware within the first few moments and certainly the first date of can she relax around him? Does she feel more held, more safe, more seen, more comfortable than she can on her own? Because frankly, she's doing quite fine already. How can you be that presence, that listening, that awareness, that discernment, noticing that her brow furrowed and she was like, "Mm, she didn't like that cup of tea. And and you notice and you're like, hey, is that tea really not to your liking? Should we get you something else? You noticed? Well, I noticed something. Maybe was it just too hot? No, no, no. You're right. I don't really like this flavor. You, you're my hero. Like maybe that sounds dorky and crazy, but like that means a lot because that says to her, oh my God, when things get tough, he's going to notice. He's not going to go anywhere. He's going to sit in the fire. He's going to have my back and he's going to help me. Not that she's like needy, like need that kind of help, but we want, we do want a hero from as small as a cup of tea to as big as lovemaking or huge money decisions, or maybe you're together and your parents die or the kids have an issue. Who are you going to be? We don't care who you are on a good day. I mean, that's impressive. That's lovely. We want to know who you are when things get tough. Can you be there? I think guys have a hard time reconciling the different nuances emotionally and cognitively of what you just said, especially as it pertains to their relationships with women. On one hand, we don't want to represent all these terrible things that so many people in the media are saying is toxic, like being a controlling jerk or manipulating women, telling them what to do, not respecting their personhood. Yet we're also told that men need to be this rock of Gibraltar. We need to be this hero. And yeah, okay, it sounds dorky to some guys, but you're not the first woman who's ever mentioned this before, and you won't be the last. And guys are like, well, how the hell am I supposed to be a hero or be the rock in your life if I'm not the one making the decisions when the chips are down, if I don't have a certain degree of dominance, if I'm not able to provide, protect, and preside? But doesn't that sound like the quote unquote evil patriarchy? Well, a lot of guys are struggling with this Mm. when in reality, I think more men than not think in terms of black or white on this issue. Right. We have a hard time with the gray area. And what I try to tell men, Alana, and I'd love for you to riff on this, is that you can be a dominant decision maker if you're making those decisions confidently and assertively in the best interest of the woman you're with and indeed for your family someday. And you can do all of this without being a mean-spirited, selfish, controlling jerk, obviously, because that's certainly not in the best interest of anybody you allegedly love. But perhaps the most ironic part of it to men is you could do this with a sense of humor, with jokes, with a smile on your face. You can do this warmly, You can act in the best interest of those people you love and indeed have a dominant way about you, but that dominance is earned. Mm -hmm. It's respected by women, respected by your children, because you don't do them wrong. You do right by them. You make solid decisions based on wisdom and based on genuine positive concern for them that tend to work. And that relieves women of this burden of feeling like they've got to protect themselves or they've got to take on that masculine role, even when they're sitting on a date with you. But when you're light, when you're warm, when you're helping her laugh, that ability to make a woman laugh, which we all know is a superpower, is based on the simple fact that when women are laughing, they're having fun. They're relaxing. They're safe. Therefore, they're allowed to express that feminine joy. And when you add it all up, Alana, that's how men make women horny, isn't it? 
<laughs> yeah, I said it earlier, juicy, totally. <laughs> You're this is perfect. I'm so glad we're having this conversation and thanks again for inviting me back after a few years so we could go even deeper. What we're really talking about here is what I uh, my expertise in intimacy. So when we're intimate with ourselves, that doesn't mean we're spinning in our head trying to look good, do it right, get approval, stay in control. No, when we're intimate, we're actually going all the way inside all the way into our heart. And that's kind of a strange thing to talk about. Like, oh my God, the heart. But really, it's very scientifically. Like I, I interview quantum physicists on my show all the time. There is a truly scientific, measurable resonance of coherence when you're in your heart. What it feels like is like I have compassion. What it feels like is in the face of anything, I'm okay. What it feels like is, hey, I, I know when it's appropriate to make a joke and when it's just appropriate to put my hand on her shoulder and say, I got you. It's, it's heart wisdom, noble wisdom, warmth, wisdom, king energy, wisdom, as opposed to fear, which goes up to the mind, which is where we're talking about these dominant assholes who don't want to be dominant and controlling. It's a different reality. We're not talking about that reality. We're talking about a man who's a noble badass, who's literally sourcing his power, wisdom, discernment, awareness, nobility, from his core, his soul, his spirit, his heart. Then that energy goes up to the mind and he executes an action. And the mind becomes almost like a divine mind, doing what's right when no one's looking, uh, what I call nobility. So so there, it doesn't need to be black or white. We need to start with having an intimate relationship with ourselves, which is another way of saying we don't judge ourselves either. We don't criticize ourselves either. We, we, we soothe ourselves if we're afraid of her rejecting us. We, we know how to be vulnerable and authentic. We don't shine people on pretending we're somebody we're not. Then we don't beat ourselves up. You know, if we made a mistake, okay, we made a mistake. What did I learn? Get back up, brush myself off, move on, right? This is how we cultivate this inner character by having an, an intimate relationship with ourself. Then you become a man who operates as a noble badass. And as you so beautifully said, warmth, humor, coming from, you know, what's for the highest good of all. When you're when you're acting that way with a woman, the blend of your your spine, maybe we'll call it, your your strength, your knowing, your discernment, handling stuff, putting out fires, is blended with care kindness, doing the right thing when nobody's watching. That blend I call a noble badass. And that blend solves all these issues and projections and drama from the media. Just let all that go and just use it as, if anything, a catalyst to come home to what, well, what does work for me? What does work for making women feel safe and comfortable? And it's really you being your best self. It all sounds so easy when spoken in plain English, but there's an evolved wisdom there. Oh, this takes work. Yeah, you're totally right. Oh, yeah. And this is the reason why younger women are drawn to older men because of that evolved wisdom. You know, when you're talking about nobility and being a badass and being a noble badass in particular, it sounds a lot like that fourth pillar of what really attracts women genuinely in the real world, which is character. Because mm -hmm. character is what separates the guys who attract women now in the moment from guys who keep women around long term who have women in their life who want to stay there by choice for months or even years. It's what allows you to meet the woman of your dreams and have that woman of your dreams choose you just like you're choosing her. Yeah, it's beautiful. One of the, um, I didn't really know this, but one of my most searched videos on YouTube, uh, the title is something to do with, you know, how three ways to be a noble badass. And the third uh, way I was explaining to men is when you've had a, a shitty day, when you've been out on the, you know, the warrior battlefield and you failed, when you come home, you don't pretend you come home and you can be real and you allow yourself to literally be held physically or symbolically in the breast of the queen. Like you allow yourself to not have to be this perfect person. You allow yourself to have your ups and have your downs and not come home and blame your boss and, and be a, like a little 17 year old, like blaming everybody and, you know, not, not evolved into this noble badass. You're willing to go, you know what? This hurt. This was unfair. I was humiliated. Everything fell apart that I, that I'd put all that energy into growing together and you just be. You just be sad, you just be disappointed, and you allow yourself to be loved in your wobbly, I guess we could call it, 
and you don't hide him. You don't shame yourself. You don't pretend you shouldn't feel that way. You don't reject and judge yourself. That's again, this character building intimate relationship with yourself. If you do your own inner work, you'll be able to be in a relationship when you have a bad day that you can come home and, and she can just hold you and you can let yourself be held. That's an external example of what you're actually doing internally with yourself. And that's the capacity of a king, of a noble man, of an older gentleman who has this noble badass energy. It's, a, it's the ability to sit in a fire and, and not go anywhere and just breathe and emerge this quality of strength, resilience, grit, whatever it is, forgiveness, humility that a lot of men don't get around to. But if you can do that, there's an energy when you come home that even though you've had a bad day, your ability to sit in the fire, not blame, not hide, and just be with your woman, that literally makes her feel safe and comfortable. She's like so respectful of you. She's like, oh my God, he's, he's amazing. I just want to love him even more. And then she wants to believe in you even more. She wants to be the wind in your sails even more. And then it brings out the best in women. It's like, I believe in you. I don't care if your boss doesn't. Like, you go out there and you kick kick ass, honey, and come home and fuck my brains out. I love you. Like, or whatever she's going to say. But it brings out the best in a woman. When you can rest in your discomfort and not go anywhere, she feels safe that she can be in her discomfort and not go anywhere. You as a couple can get through anything together. And that makes her just feel so, so good and wants, she wants to give all of her love and radiance and support to you. You know, I too love the depth of this conversation. And what you just said is so profound, especially when spoken with the voice of a woman that guys, I think you should go back and rewind the last five or six minutes of this podcast and listen to it two more times. Here's what's going on there. Because I get it. I fully get every word of what you just said. And it is not nearly as complex or supernatural as it may sound when spoken. And what's more, you put so much emotion behind your description of what's going on in that scenario you just described that it is absolutely apparent how passionate you are about it, how it makes you feel how much it just flat out straight up works when a man acts like that. And not to be underestimated is the relevance of everything you just said to the core topic of this podcast, which is making a woman feel safe and comfortable. Now on the surface, it sounds so much like the courageous vulnerability talked about by Brene Brown. In other words, like, yeah, okay, sure. I'm stronger by being more willing to admit things and say I failed and you know, apologize to my kids and tell them I love them instead of trying to be some kind of macho hard ass. Yeah, I think guys already get that. But the part that is not to be missed in what you just talked about, Alana, is that part where the woman is safer, more secure, and ends up loving the guy and respecting him more because he valued her enough to rest in her feminine nature, which is what you're talking about. Yeah. He comes home. He said, okay, I got my ass kicked out there today. I was doing what men do. And because I am a mortal human being, it didn't go today the way I wanted it to go. Today wasn't a day where I won. But instead of coming home and acting like a child, like you already covered eloquently, and instead of blaming everybody else, I'm going to own it. And I'm not going to stop acting like a champ and act like a chump instead. I'm simply going to recognize I'm still a champion in waiting. The championship comes in the future still. I was hoping for it today. It didn't happen. Meanwhile, as a woman, as my partner, and importantly, as a co-equal in this relationship, your femininity, your nature as a female human being is not somehow subservient and less than my masculinity. You know, a lot of women out there are trying to claim virtuous masculinity for themselves, even as they tell men their masculinity is purely toxic. Mm -hmm. Well, that, in my opinion, comes from a very misguided belief that somehow femininity is not the higher calling. And it is. Femininity, as I've said on this show before, is everything we live for on weekends. It's the joy. It's the fun. It's the comfort. Mm -hmm. And when you as a man are providing 
protecting, presiding. When you're doing those things that masculinity does, the purpose of that femininity is to comfort you, is to give you back your joy. Masculinity makes the world safe for femininity so that femininity can come back and fuel your masculinity to go back out there and do great things. Mm -hmm. That femininity in and of itself is therefore a great thing. Women, with everything they provide, everything they're willing to do for a man, is hopelessly, fecklessly squandered when we as men come home, stomp around the house, blame our wives, blame our kids, and act like children, because then we have a huge blind spot, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for going even deeper into this. Cause a lot of times uh, I'm asked on interviews, like, you know, from the men's point of view, what do I do when she has an emotional storm and it goes loco on me? Right. That's often the dynamic that I'm, that I'm helping. And we can talk about that if you, if you'd like, but very few times do we turn the tables and, and really allow the, the female to be that sanctuary that cocoon that a man can come home into and be refueled with her love, her, her energy, her warmth, her belief, and that it's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength, not to blame, criticize, become a child, give up, hide, etc., project. It's actually a sign of such wisdom and perseverance and grit. If he's just willing to sit in the fire and let himself be soothed by his beloved and fueled up again and let her believe in him. It's, it's, it's it validates her feminine purpose in yeah. a way that makes her feel safe for lack of a better word. It's almost, yes. It's almost like we have this untapped energy. This is how I feel it inside. Cause I'm so whatever emotional, as you said, passionate, like there's like this untapped resource of energy to fuel the masculine, to awaken his noble grandeur. It's like in reserve and it only comes out when he has earned it, deserves it, is being in the energy thinking. and the behavior of a noble man. It's like, Oh yes. You are who I've had all this energy to respect. You are who I've had all this energy to believe in. Here is my devotion. It's like it waits around for someone, it's like a receptacle <laughs> to put it into. It waits for a man to lead. That's what we're talking about when nice. we're talking about men leading. Yeah. We're not talking about men controlling and manipulating women. We're talking mm. about men doing that. Yeah, yeah, it's so true. And it's really, really awesome for a woman to feel that amount of energy moving through her. Because a lot of us women in our days, and even motherhood is very do, 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 action, action. And certainly work is very do, 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 action, action. That's why we love sex. That's why we love to surrender. That's why we love to be ravished because we can come into our bodies again. But there's this whole idea of in the, in the moment of conflict, that it could be amazing that in a moment of discomfort, we could feel more fluid and alive and radiant and loving. It, it really sort of makes this idea that we should just be happy all the time. No, no, no. Even the discomfort has beauty and possibility, just as rich and maybe even more rich um, for, for the relationship to get closer. And it feels amazing as a woman to give give love at a time like this and believe in a man. We Just like you really want to please us, we just really want to believe in you. Yeah, and I also think it shouldn't be overlooked that some guys may be struggling with that other scenario you described where you come home and your woman is being emotionally loco, <laughs> as you described. A lot of guys don't know what to do with that. And I've always addressed that with a rather elegant solution. Anytime someone has asked me, what do women want? I've given the same answer, and I've yet to have any woman argue with that answer which means that you know I'm probably on to something. <laughs> and what I say is a woman wants a man to hold her, tell her everything is going to be okay, and believe him. You're not there to fix it. You're not there to rewind the clock and pretend it didn't happen. You're there as her rock, as her hero, as her support mechanism to help her feel and to give her that freedom in which she can feel fully. Yeah, that's beautiful. And if you can't hold her, then hold space. Because quite often when I'm having a loco moment, I don't want to be held. I want to be heard or hold space and be listened to without being fixed. And then once that phase of the eruption has occurred, I definitely want to be held. And then I want to have a good cry. And then I want to make love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think we understand that progression. But, you know, for the sake of simplicity, I say it the way I say it. But yeah, holding space, listening. Yeah. Um, allowing that moment to happen. Basically, what we're talking about here is helping her feel safe in that. Yes. 
But this is a good nuance that we clear up because sometimes if we really think, oh, I need to hold her now, but she's a volcano erupting, that could get dangerous. Like, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. You might get, you know, China plates thrown at you like in The Godfather, right? <laughs> That's what I just want to be sure it doesn't happen to the listeners. Absolutely. But again, we got to take some personality type stuff into consideration there too, you know? Yes. Yes. But the good news is that both scenarios, no matter which way they're coming at you, he's had a bad day. She's had a bad day. The the superpower that I still would come home to, the, the most efficient growth uh, choice you can make here is, do I have an intimate relationship with myself right now? She's loco over there. How am I going to hold space? How am I going to not fix if I don't have my own back? If I can't sit in my own fire of discomfort, if I can't soothe myself and stay present, if we don't have an intimate relationship with ourself, we go into our head. Oh my God, what did I do wrong? What a bitch she is. Like it's, we're just spinning in our head. We're not present. We're not having an intimate relationship with our body, our heart, our nobility, our truth, where we just can't be. We spin in our head. So again, it comes back to this intimate relationship with yourself that come what may, I'm okay. Come what may. I love and accept myself. I still need to grow and evolve and clean up my messes and take responsibility and, you know, do the right thing when nobody's looking. Okay, got it. But still, at the end of the day, even if everything falls away, I love and accept myself. Very few people, men or women, have slowed down enough to really cultivate that relationship with themselves. They still seek external achievements, accomplishments, women, money, things looking a certain way in order to love and accept themselves. But be given, we can't control any of that. And once we get it, we can lose it. It's insane to try to seek that sense of ah, love and acceptance on the outside in. Instead, if you take some time and, and just take like 10 minutes a day of this cultivating this intimate relationship with yourself, having your own back, being the own your own like tree trunk and rooted down into the earth, that kind of feeling... If you don't do that, you're going to always give your power away. Women will be able to manipulate you and use you. You're going to feel doubt and hesitancy. But if you do the inner work, and it doesn't take long, but it is a consistent practice, you can rest in the face of anything. Oh, my God, that's so sexy to a woman. That makes her feel safe and comfortable. It elicits respect and devotion, not just from women, but from men. It makes you trustworthy from your clients or colleagues or closing in your next big deal. It's because in the face of anything, you got this. If you fall down, you're not going to judge anybody or freak out. You're going to learn and get back up. I was saying to someone on a podcast the other day, they were young. They were like these young millennials interviewing me and I'm going to be 50 in a couple of months here. And so they were saying, so who, who do you think's hot, Alana? And I said, I think what's hot is a man who's lost everything and gotten back up and created again and learned from it. A beautiful blend of humility and confidence. And they were like, oh, and the, they hadn't failed yet. A lot of young guys have quick success, but they haven't failed yet. I won't trust them as much as I trust a man who's made it, lost it, and then made it again, and he's wiser. Well, there's a lot of wisdom to yeah. be gained from losing and then having to rebuild. You know, one time I lost a job that I thought I'd interviewed perfectly for because the guy told me, you know, you're a great kid, but you haven't been kicked around the block yet. Huh. Therefore, you're going to lack some of the wisdom I'm looking for in this position. And at the time, I was so upset. Mm. I was like, who the hell does this guy think he is? But, you know, all those external projections and representations that you talked about, like, you know, look at my money, look at my car, look at my Yale degree. Those are all immature and unwise. And there isn't anything sexier than knowing who the hell you are, which I talk about with these guys all the time. Love it. And importantly, if you don't know who the hell you are, a woman can't know who the hell you really are either because it hasn't been decided yet. It hasn't even been defined. Therefore, she can't possibly, wait for it, feel safe with you. So that brings the conversation full circle, doesn't it? Alana, this has been a wonderful conversation. We're running out of time. We could probably talk about this for a full length info product <laughs> subject. <laughs> and actually you have, which is why I want to go ahead and send guys to your website, which they can find by going to www.mountaintoppodcast.com front slash Pratt, P-R-A-T-T, because that's a lot easier than trying to figure out where all the L's and N's and A's go in the word Alana. So 
www.mountaintoppodcast.com front slash Pratt, P-R-A-T-T, where they can find something special you have for them called How to Be a Noble Badass. And you've already discussed at great length what that means. So I'm sure all these guys are going to flock over to your website, Alana, and get their hands on How to Be a Noble Badass. Once again, that's www.mountaintoppodcast.com front slash Pratt, P-R-A-T-T. Alana, always a pleasure. You're one of the deep thinkers in this niche of dating and relationship advice. And one of the things I really appreciate about you is you have a deep heartfelt love for the work and you have a deep heartfelt love for both men and women, which Mm -hmm. I respect and appreciate. So thank you so much for coming back on the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I've so enjoyed this. Intimacy is an inside job and you never have to fear being rejected by a woman if you never reject yourself. And that's really the intimate relationship we're talking about. Thank you. I can't wait to have you on my podcast again. Yes. Emily and I are both going to join you there. Intimacy is an inside job. Man, you better trademark that if you thought of it. That's on the new website. You go there and have some fun, people. (laughs) Yeah, Outstanding. And guys, if you have not yet been to www.mountaintoppodcast.com, go there and schedule your 25-minute call with me personally where we can talk about your life, where you're headed, the kind of women you want to have in it, and how to live your best life with the best woman, the greatest woman you've ever met. Go to www.mountaintoppodcast.com, click on the link that offers you 25 minutes with me for free, and you'll find that I'm down to earth. I'm exactly the guy you think I'm going to be. And I can't wait to hear from you. It's all there for you at www.mountaintoppodcast.com. And until I talk to you again real soon, this is Scott McKay from X and Y Communications in San Antonio, Texas. Be good out there. The Mountaintop Podcast is produced by X and Y Communications. All rights reserved worldwide. Be sure to visit www.mountaintoppodcast.com for show notes. And while you're there, sign up for the free X and Y Communications newsletter for men. This is Ed Roy Odom speaking for the Mountaintop Podcast.